Hi, good morning everybody. It's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers. Thank you again for joining us for the EYE show. This is episode 16. And just a reminder to please subscribe to our podcast uh, or YouTube channel wherever you're seeing this and please pass it on to friends. I hope this will be very helpful to explain the different concepts of eye health, ophthalmology, as well as general health. So thank you to all those who have sent suggestions and questions. We really appreciate it. One of my patients uh, a couple of days ago said, I've been listening to your podcast over and over and over again. I was very honored and I want to like, you know, absorb everything. So it was very, very sweet of this uh, patient to say this. So I really appreciate that. Um, so I'm hoping I'm, you know, making sense to most of you and I can really answer your questions. So please don't hesitate to email us. I'm one of the surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about platelet rich plasma and autologous serum. And so some of my other podcasts have talked about this innovative treatment that we've been using for dry eyes for many years. Many patients don't know that much about something called platelet rich plasma. So when we talk about eye health and helping uh, the whole body even, we talk about using your own cells. And these really are not drugs, they are your own cells. There's many ways to use your cells to heal you. And one of the ways we've used for years is called autologous serum. And what we do is we take a patient's blood, we use a centrifuge to spin it down, we take the clear part of the blood called the serum, and that serum is the same serum that heals you when you cut your finger. The cytokines, interleukins, there's vitamin A in there, there's uh, these growth factors that kind of go to the wound and heal you. The same thing is true when you isolate the serum, and we put them in these little bottles, and it's all done sterilely. They kind of look like this. So a little plastic bottle, about three cc, sometimes it comes in five cc's, and it's clear, it's not bloody, and we use it as an eye drop. Generally, we start using it about six to eight times a day, depending on the severity of the symptom and what the diagnosis is. So autologous serum, and we'll talk about platelet rich plasma in just a moment, which is a very similar concept, is used to treat anything from dry eye symptoms, because there's damaged cells, there's inflammation that has caused the death of certain cells. And that inflammation can lead to constant pain, tearing, foreign body sensation, grittiness, uh, redness, uh, sandy sensation, all these different, or even vision, blurry vision, because the damage can occur on the cornea, which is the window of the eye, or on the surface of the eye, which is called the conjunctiva or the goblet cells. So this, these serum cells, your serum drops, go to the surface. They seem to repair tissue, so it's not just an anti-inflammatory, it's not just an antibiotic, but actually heal cells. And the question is, how does it exactly do that? And there's a couple of theories about that. The two key theories are that it actually physically helps those damaged cells and replaces and takes over. And then the other theory, which is also par partly true, is that it takes your kind of slower dying cells and rejuvenates them. It pumps them up with cytokines and growth factors and interleukins. And we have multiple papers on its effectiveness on anything like I mentioned from dry eye to re recurrent erosion syndrome where people are born with a issue on their window of their eye, their cornea, where the cells just disappear and they keep sloughing off. If you rub the eye the wrong way or if you get something into the eye, it just damages that, that connection between the epithelium and the basement membrane at the window of the eye, and that can lead to constant pain. So people wake up in the middle of the night with horrible pain, or they'll be just doing their normal daily work and wake up or, or experience a horrible discomfort. And this autologous serum and platelet rich plasma drops help significantly with that. We've used it for years for things like chemical burns, Stevens-Johnson's disease, graft versus host disease, post-LASIK, refractive surgery pain, post-cataract pain, post any kind of pain. So chemical burns, like I mentioned, those used for many things. So we will use the serum to help patients get better. And as I mentioned, we start off at six to eight times a day, depending on the patient, but some patients need it every hour. And when I was at Harvard, we used the serum mostly and only on patients that had autoimmune disease because we knew their system, their body was attacking their cornea and their conjunctiva uh, pretty acutely. And the, the serum would work incredibly well. But as time has gone on, we've seen that the serum works very well for all kinds of patients with any kind of eye issues in terms of uh, symptoms of dry eye and so forth. So we love autologous serum. 
there are two ways to make autologous serum. One is with preservative and one is without preservative. And I always recommend preservative free. There is so much data showing that preservatives over time can damage the delicate cells of the eye. So we wanna be very careful with that. And some people are allergic to preservatives. So I've never met a patient yet allergic to their own serum. It's probably happened, I just haven't physically seen that happen or reported, so it's super duper safe. Um, so autologous serum is definitely a wonderful option. If a patient, we'll have patients tell us what's your number one symptom. Is it pain, is it redness, is it foreign body sensation, grittiness, tearing, reflex tearing, uh, vision issues. And once we have that, we'll ask them on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the worst, 10 kind of being like, I notice it 100% of my time when I'm awake or even it wakes me up at night. And then once the symptoms start to get down below a five out of 10, we start to decrease the serum or the platelet-rich plasma. And we'll keep going down until they're less than three out of 10. We wanna get patients to zero out of 10, especially if they're young, meaning less than 90 years old, really. We don't want anyone to have constant pain. You never should notice your eyes. You should feel your eyes like you feel your pinky or your heart, which means never. If you notice your heart, you're going to the emergency room. If you notice your eyes, you need to know, do something because we know what that means. It means, like I've mentioned before, your body is telling you I'm forming scar tissue. And so that's something that we want to try to minimize because that will lead to permanent scar tissue, which can be, become a big problem. So basically, we are trying to help the body heal itself naturally with your own cells. In ophthalmology, there are basically multiple categories of drops. We have over-the-counter drops, which you do not need a prescription. We always recommend preservative-free drops. We have the prescription options, which are FDA-approved, which are three, Zydra, Restasis, and Sequel. We've talked about those before. And then the other category is your own cells. And within your own cells, if we've, as we've talked about before, there's autologous serum, platelet-rich plasma, stem cell drops. And we've also now started to use cord blood serum in a donated baby's cord because it does help heal cells. So autologous serum has been very helpful. Some patients, we start usually with a 20% dilution. For most patients, that's what the literature has said, but in some patients, it's not enough. We have to go to 50 or even 100%, but it's still not clear why some people need that. Most people don't. Most patients do very well with autologous serum, but if there's a patient that's very uncomfortable, very severe, or has tried autologous serum before, we'll give platelet-rich plasma. And Katya was going to bring me a sample. Do you have the sample or not yet? No, can, I can have Evelyn. They didn't have any more. Oh, got it. Okay, so maybe one of these other days I'll show you what it actually looks like. But I'll just show you again. So it comes in these little tubes. We put it in the freezer and we give it to patients. It's usually good for about, we give a three-month supply depending on how much blood we can drop. So the platelet-rich plasma, the platelets similarly, are the molecules of cells in your blood that when you cut yourself, your platelets go to the wound and they basically heal your wound. And so that wound is kind of going to be formed by cytokines, interleukins, growth factors, vitamin A, uh, epithelial, epithelial growth factors. So those growth factors are going to kind of heal your wound, and the same thing happens in the eye. We know platelets have more growth factors, or platelet-rich plasma has more concentrated growth factors than autologous serum. And so if a patient is significantly uncomfortable or has significant signs of dryness, sometimes we jump right to PRP drops. So platelet-rich plasma drops are very helpful. Again, we start around 20% dilution. It's diluted with no preservatives, balanced or normal saline rather. And we try to stick with preservative free, as I mentioned. Sometimes we have to go to 50, sometimes we go to 100. Depending on the severity of the symptoms, sometimes we'll start at every hour while the patient's awake. Most often we'll say six to eight times a day until the symptoms get below about a five out of 10. And then patients can start to go down to four uh, times a day, depending on the symptoms. How long does it take to get an effect from these drops? We've had multiple patients noticing an improvement within one week. Some patients need a little bit more time. Some patients, it doesn't help. So it's not 100% guaranteed. We don't understand why. There's only one patient that I know of that said they got worse with PRP drops, which is very rare. And I don't think it was an allergy, it was preservative free. I don't know exactly why that happened. It's not been reported in the literature, but out of thousands of patients we've, we've tried, the majority of patients get better. The biggest risk with any of these drops is an infection, which is incredibly rare. I, to date, have not seen an infection reported with PRP drops. Your own cells are naturally antibiotic. So what we're worried about is when you take the bottle, let's say you open the bottle, I'll just open this up, this is a sterile, and then you take your bottle, 
we do this under a sterile technique, and then you take off the top, and then you're giving yourself drops. If the tip maybe touches the eye, or, or you leave it to be warm, as I mentioned, these all go in the freezer, and then once a week you put one in the fridge. It's good for about seven to 10 days at most, but it always has to go back in the refrigerator, or it can go in a little thermos with a little ice pack. So these are pretty big. We have little smaller ones also. So they're pretty small. You can put them in the thermos with your ice pack. We've had patients come in from New Zealand, uh, from all over the world, the Netherlands, uh, even Italy, and, and even uh, uh, I think the farthest away is New Zealand. So they come in with their little thermos and you know that we teach them how to do that. So that's something that you can do and you don't need to be as scared of using it because most people, We've not seen any infection with either one of these to date, but it's been reported in the literature with autologous serum, so very rare. With platelet-rich plasma, for some reason, there are some patients where the platelet membrane, even though this is activated platelets, the membrane starts to break open even more after we've given it to the patient, and the membrane can clog the tip. I've spoken to colleagues at Harvard. They've seen the same thing. We don't know why, but the more we use platelet-rich plasma, there are certain patients that have this, and most patients don't. Part of me th thought initially it was related to an autoimmune disease issue, but I've had patients that really do not have an autoimmune issue, and they still, the tip can get a little clogged. So what we will tell patients is you take a sterile needle, and we can give one to patients if it's an issue. You just do this with clean hands. You don't have to glove them. I take off the needle, and just basically, let me just show you how to do it so you don't have to be so scared. Um, so clean hands. You can wipe off the tip of the uh, bottle with alcohol, which I don't have with me, but clean off the tip with alcohol. This is sterile, and you just take the needle and just go in to the bottle, and then just make it a little bit bigger. And that usually will take care of it. This one's actually not completely closed. So this, and then just kind of make the hole a little bit bigger, and then that usually takes care of it. And if it doesn't, or somebody's scared to do this, we have them come in here and we do it for them. And we will sometimes even kind of remove the membrane so it doesn't block the tip, and that way you can kind of use your drop still. The platelet-rich plasma has been used, uh, platelet-rich plasma in general has been used for years for all kinds of illnesses and issues in the body. Most recently, that's been used as a possible alternative to surgery for joints. So orthopedic surgeons are injecting it to all kinds of joints, even the spine. Uh, the dermatologists have used this for years for hair loss. They will actually use a 30-gauge needle and inject it into the follicle area. They're not even putting it in the follicle like we <clears throat> used to do for my booming gland dysfunction <clears throat> when we had a cannula. They actually used just a needle and it doesn't damage the follicle, which is kind of interesting for my research. So um, I'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, so that's been used. And then of course, Kim Kardashian most recently had this kind of vampire facial where she had uh, this needling procedure and they put her platelet-rich plasma on top. So that's been very helpful. There has been one case of us using somebody else's platelet-rich plasma for a patient, which is very rare. And it was a patient that had three autoimmune diseases. She had rheumatoid arthritis, she had Sjogren's, she had Crohn's disease. She was in a lot of discomfort. So she asked if her sister could contribute her platelet-rich plasma. And that's something we don't usually do. Uh, the patient actually did get a little bit better because it was helpful, but it wasn't like a cure, it's not a cure. So it just helps with the symptoms, but most often it's autologous, meaning it comes from the patient's own blood. So it's super duper safe. So we do love using platelet-rich plasma for this reason. When we did our presentation a couple years ago at this international conference, we showed our data of inserting platelet-rich plasma into the meibomian gland with a cannula. Since COVID, the cannulas are not available. So we, our research has had to decrease a little bit. And so in my brain, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should just try to use a needle, a 30 gauge needle. But the problem is we just don't know what that 30 gauge needle would do if you're kind of going into the area of the meibomian gland, would you disrupt the column of the gland and cause scar tissue? So it's a little too risky. With the cannula, we were just going right into the actual hole of the meibomian gland super safe, nobody got worse, no structures got worse, and we noticed an improvement in the meibomian gland structure and also in patient symptoms. I think at the last count, we only had about 25 patients in the study, so it's not like thousands were done. Uh, we did not have a control arm, and that's the next step we have to do. We wanna do one eye or even one eyelid where we do the platelet-rich plasma insertion into the meibomian glands with a cannula, and the other eye we don't put in platelet-rich plasma and see what happens over time. That's the best kind of study. Uh, or actually even a blinded study where the doctor or the, somebody else is looking to, at, the, at the patient afterwards to see what was done and figure out if it, there's an improvement with that. 
but we have patients, as many of you are aware, that have very few meibomian glands left. And so we're trying to do everything we can to help save those meibomian glands and decrease surface inflammation. So the platelets as a drop decreases inflammation. I don't have data to say that in and of itself saves the meibomian glands. It doesn't seem to restore the meibomian glands, but it's definitely helpful for inflammation. Inserting it into the meibomian gland, I think we're onto something. So that's what the research is all about. So I hope this was helpful. This is basically just more information about platelet-rich plasma and autologous serum. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.